Okay, now here's a musical that we laid out in QLab, and what I'm going to do is dissect it for you so you can understand what's going on and understand how to build something similar yourself. I should note that you're going to see all these red X's in my programming here, and that's because I'm on a remote system currently where I'm building the show and just going through it for you for the sake of this recording and therefore I don't have all the live audio interfaces and connectivity that I normally would in the venue where this actual QList um, file would be played back for QLab. So that's why we're getting the warning here that the workspace contains some broken cues or other potential issues. Those issues are actually the fact that the audio interface hardware is not currently connected. So anywhere where I've got um, an audio track, um, it's not seeing it. Same thing with the MIDI commands over TCIP. It's not going to see those um, because I'm not connected. So for instance, if I were to go into audio, you can see that my uh, virtual sound card is currently disconnected because I don't have that installed on this particular uh, computer that has this version of QLab installed right now. So that's what that's all about. Same thing with the um, network. I don't have the TCIP over IP connected right now for the audio commands because they're MIDI commands over TCIP. So what we have here is our very first queue, which happens to be the cast sound check queue on the sound console, because in this particular show, we're doing three levels of control. We're running music and sound effects from QLab itself as an audio source. We've got the control of the sound console, and then we also have the control of the lighting console. So three different things going on, and they're all tied together. So what you're looking at here is our first audio cue, which is the sound check uh, cue for the cast. And basically what that does is this is set up as a start first and enter type group, because on this particular sound console, it requires two separate um, changes, the MIDI bank change and then the, the control change and the program change. So what we've got here is a group. And then within that group, this MIDI bank change has an auto follow, as you can see right there, tied to it. So it starts with this one, then goes to this one. So that's how all of our sound cues work. And what I do is I typically build these in a cue list and we just drag and drop them over as needed so that the math is all done for all the MIDI sequences and things like that. And that's why they're labeled like Q1, Q2, Q3. So the very first thing we do is mark the script up, figure out where all those changes are, then record those changes on the sound console with who's up, who's down, that kind of thing. And we keep everything at Unity. That way we do the sound check to get through just the gain structure on the actual gain for those channels, keeping again, everything at unity. And then we go into our show. And then if we need to make a um, change in the middle of the show, we can do a tweak here or there because we do filters on all of the rest of the cues. The main sound check cue does not get filtered, everything else does. And that way it's only looking at fader position on the rest of these remaining cues. So that's how we do audio. So then we go into the top of the show, which after sound check, this gets us ready for the uh, pre-show lighting and the entry for the house. So that means Q1 is gonna bring down all the microphones that we just did in sound check. And we keep them muted basically in sound check. And then we unmute one by one and mute them again once they're done. So now all the mutes are off and they're down ready to go. House lights come up. So that's uh, OSC change because we're controlling an ETC console through OSC messaging on the network. So if you go to settings, you can see that that's Q1 firing right there. And these are in a group. And this means that this is a timeline group, which means all of this triggers together. So it's gonna both bring down the mics and also bring up the house lights when we go into the top of the show. So then to start the show, we have the overture. And what that's going to do is again, it's a timeline group. So it's going to start both at the same time, which means we're gonna start the overture music and then we've got a pre-weight on this one, but this light cue 2.5 is going to dim the house 12 seconds in to the overture. And then the overture concludes 27 seconds. And once the overture is done, we go into our lights up. And this is a manual cue done as a group because we're gonna wait for the cast to enter the stage and be in position.
So they're running out during the overture, probably in the dark. And then we're going to go with lights up here and then their mics go up. And this is P1 is telling us that this takes place on page one. We've labeled that cue so we know. You can additionally color code if you want. And then we've got a song here. So the song plays. And then we've got a cue there that goes. And that starts at the start of the song. Probably uh, takes out whoever doesn't need to be up from the previous part of the scene. And then we have a light cue that happens during the song at about one minute and 19 seconds in. And then we actually have uh, a play out that happens right after that song. So as you can see, this song is actually one minute, 14 seconds long. The overall group length for the cues are four minutes, 44 seconds, and they're timing all on their own. What happens is when that song ends, we wait for a few seconds of applause, then we go into this, and then we have a number of microphone changes during that number. So during that song number three, we've got at the beginning of that a microphone change, then a minute 27 seconds in, we have another microphone change, two minutes, 27 seconds in, another microphone change. And remember, you can't time all of this off of this song, it's timed off of the triggering of the group. So they all go together. And it continues, again, there's a lighting change at two minutes and 49 seconds. So you just have to be cognizant of where you are to do your math here for your pre-wait times. But this makes execution very easy and it also takes the error out of it. So any human error, because these are all pre-recorded tracks, it, it makes it a lot easier. I'll show you what I mean. If we were to hit go on this, notice all of this is firing together and now counting down. And if we were to enter into show mode, you could see it even more. So everything's going here. And you can see that we're now already queued up to our next queue on deck, which is the reprise after this. So all of these are going, you can see the timers counting down. They're all triggering on their own, doing their own thing based on the pre-weights and the groupings that we've timed. So then we've got a manual sound effect here that happens on page 14 after the reprise. And with that sound effect, we've got the lighting change, the sound effect itself, and then a microphone change. And that's all, again, contained within a group. So that group is called the sound effect names because that happens and that's what triggers it. And that way the operator that's running QLab knows what to look for when to, to hit uh, go on that. And this is how it builds all through the show. So you get through act one and I'll, I'm just gonna stop this here. We'll go back into edit mode here. And this continues down. And you can just see here's the end of act one. And then we have a manual lights up on the house. At the end of this number, we go back to that Q1, which we know brings all the microphones down. So now they're all out and it's safe for intermission. So then at that point, manually bring up the house lights. And then for the top of act two, it's the same thing. And then we go right into it. We have a cue here that brings up some, some microphones. I think this is actually for a, a run through the audience at that point. And then a light cue. And this is pretty much how we build our show. We have a couple manual cues here for sound where we're taking uh, just microphone changes. There's no song or anything with that. It's just a microphone change at various pages in the script. But this makes the overall execution of this show a lot less cumbersome and a lot less room for human error. And so as we get to the end of the show, you can see that on page 114, we've got a musical number that changes the lights. And then we've got a number of microphone changes that happen during the course of that tune, with the last one being our Q1, which we know takes all of the microphones out. So then that sets us up for curtain call. We do our bows cue, which brings up the music track and the lights. And then at the end of that, we basically have exit music and a different lighting cue 
that brings up the house lights. And we don't need to do anything with microphones because they're already down. And that is how we conclude our show and then do it again the next night. <laughs>